In this video, we're going to learn about radicals. More specifically, we'll learn how to add and subtract radicals, as well as how to multiply and divide them. So let's get right to it. A radical is any number that can be expressed with a radical symbol, which looks like this. This sign over here is a square root sign, and of course we already know what that does. There is, however, something that's worthy of noting. Notice how there's no number here? When there is no number, we treat it as if there were a 2 by default. We call this number the index. So if we had a 3 there instead, we'd call it a cube root, and we would be looking for a number that multiplies by itself three times to result in the radicand, which is everything inside here. Good! Now let's go over the idea of entire radicals and mixed radicals. If a number was written like this, we'd call this an entire radical since the entire term consists of only a radical. But as we probably already know by now, we can factor out perfect squares within a radical symbol. Since 60 is no different from 4 times 15, we can write it like this. And since 4 can also be written as 2 to the exponent of 2, we can factor it out to get 2 root 15. Now this form is called a mixed radical. So now let's move on to the addition of radicals. How would we solve 3 root 3 plus 2 root 3? Well, we don't quite know exactly what the square root of 3 equals to, but we do not need to here. This is because we know that 3 is being multiplied with root 3, and we know 2 is also being multiplied with the same root 3. So I have a question for you. If we had 3x plus 2x instead, how would we simplify this? Well, we would just add the coefficients together as we normally would to get 5x. So if I told you that these radicals can be added in a similar manner, then how would we solve for this? Well, all we would need to do is simply add the coefficients and we'd get 5 root 3. Now let's try a question where there's a subtraction between two radicals. So we know that this root 7 is being multiplied by 1, making it its coefficient. So we just subtract the coefficients of 5 and 1 together to get a final answer of 4 root 7. That's pretty simple as well. But if we had something like 5 root 3 minus 2 root 6, we would not be able to add or subtract this since our radicand is completely different. What we can do, however, is this. We can sometimes simplify radicals and discover that radicands can actually be manipulated to be the same. For example, here we have 3 root 2 plus 2 root 18. Although at first glance, it may seem like we can't do anything at this point, we can actually start by taking a look at the prime factors for 18. So we've got 2 times 3 times 3, and we just learned that since 3 times 3 is a perfect square, we can actually factor that out to get 2 times 3 here. And if we simplify, we end up with 3 root 2 plus 6 root 2, which we can now add together, since the radicands are the same, to get 9 root 2. Awesome! Now let's move on to multiplying radicals. How do we multiply radicals with positive radicands? Well, let's take a look at this example here. Since both of these are under a radical sign and are being multiplied together, it can actually be seen like this under the same radical sign, so we can just multiply them to get root 12. And what if we had 5 root 3 times 2 root 3? Here we can do the same thing by multiplying whatever is inside both radicals, as well as multiplying both numbers on the outside of the radicals with each other. So what we'd get is 5 times 2 to get 10, and 3 times 3 under the radical sign to get 9. But there's one more thing, and that is that we know the square root of 9 is 3. So we can simplify that, and when we compute what's remaining, we get a final answer of 30. As for dividing radicals, how would we divide something like this? Well, just like in our last example of multiplying radicals, all we would need to do is divide the numbers on the outsides of the radicals with each other, and then divide the numbers on the insides of the radicals with each other as well. So we would get 12 divided by 3, which is 4, and under the radical sign, we'd get 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So that's our final answer, 
It's fairly easy as long as you try some examples. So to finish this lesson off, let's try one last example together. Here is our example. In a situation like this, all we need to do is to use the distributive property as we normally would. So we multiply 3 root 3 with 2 root 3 to get this. And then we multiply 3 root 3 with 4 root 5 to get this. We also know that the square root of 9 is equal to 3, so this ends up equaling to 18. And there is our final answer. Awesome! So make sure to try more questions involving the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of radicals to get a better hang of them. So that's it for this one, and we'll see you guys in the next one.